Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk to you about some more Samsung Galaxy tips and tricks that I think everybody should know. And today we're starting off with the ability to share original quality photos and videos that you took on your phone. So you might know if you ever take a video or a picture on your phone and then you want to share it with family or friends, if you send it via WhatsApp or any other application, it will compress the quality of that video or image and it just won't look as nice when the other person receives it. But there's actually a way on your Galaxy phone to share the original high quality versions of those files. And the way to do that is when you find a video or a picture that you want to send. So this is a video I have of my dog. If I want to share this in the original quality, you can see that this is a 2160 by 3840 resolution. So this is a 4K video. And if I want it to remain 4K, what I need to do is when I hit this share button, instead of sharing it via any of these applications like Telegram or WhatsApp, instead hit on this quick share button and you'll see an option here for QR code or link. And if you tap on this, what's going to happen is your phone is going to automatically upload this to the Samsung cloud for free. And you can go ahead and share this QR code with somebody else so they can use their phone to scan it and get access to that video. But if that person isn't near you to scan it, you can just send them this URL instead via an email or just a text message. And they will be able to access those files in their original format. And the best part about this is the person that you're sharing this with does not need to have a Galaxy phone. They can have an iPhone, a Windows PC, a MacBook, Android phone. It doesn't matter. They will be able to access this on any of their devices. And this is completely free to use for both the sender and receiver. All right, guys, for this next setting, I want to show you a hidden Samsung feature that you might not know about that has to do with the cameras. So if we open up our cameras, go to the video tab, you might already know that if you tap up here, you have the ability to shoot in 4K 60 FPS. So if you want to slow down your footage, this is a great way to do it. But what you might not know is there is a hidden feature. If you go to more, go to pro video. And now in here, if you tap in the same spot, you now have the option to shoot in 4K 120 FPS. So if you want buttery smooth 4K slow motion, this is an awesome hidden trick that you need to know about. All right, guys, you're going to love this next feature because if you're somebody who likes to listen to background music while you're going to sleep, some maybe rainforest sounds or just podcasts, you might know that when you're playing a video on YouTube, if you exit the application or lock your phone, it will stop playing that video. And if you want to listen to any background sounds, you have to leave that video playing and leave your screen on throughout the night. And that's just not good for your phone. It's not good for your battery. It's going to generate heat. But what you can do instead is look for the Samsung internet application on your phone. If you don't have it, just go ahead and download it from the Galaxy Store. But now what you can do is search up whatever it is that you want on YouTube. Maybe you want to watch a podcast or some background rainforest sounds and start playing that video. And once it starts, you can exit that application and even lock your phone and you can see that the podcast or that video is still going in the background. So if you like to listen to background sounds or podcasts, you now have a way to do it without having to leave your phone on. You can go ahead and play it, lock your phone and enjoy your video. Now with Galaxy AI, a really cool feature that they brought to Samsung phones that I really like is the now bar, which will sit down here on your lock screen and show you any background processes that you have running. So if I start this voice recorder, you can see my now bar will pop up and I will be able to see that I have a voice recorder going and I can even manage it from here. So I can pause it, I can stop it or cancel it. And if you have any music playing or timers or alarms going, they will also show up back here. And one really cool feature about the now bar is the ability to see sports scores. So if you like to watch hockey or basketball, you can see all of the live game scores down here in your now bar, but it's not going to work by default. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. So what you want to do is go into your phone settings, scroll down to lock screen and always on display. Right there where it says now bar, you'll see sports from Google. Now, even though this is enabled by default, you still need to go in here and pick the teams that you want to follow. So tap sports from Google settings and right here in the search bar, just look for the teams that you want to follow. So you can see I have Maple Leafs, Oilers and Raptors. But if you want to follow somebody else, like maybe the LA Lakers, just type it in the search bar. And then when you see it pop up over here, simply hit follow and that's it. You're all done. Now, anytime the LA Lakers are going to be playing a game, your now bar will automatically populate down here and show you the live score of the game. So if you're into sports, this is definitely an awesome feature that you're going to love. All right, guys, for this next tip, we're going to go back into the camera and I'm going to show you how you can get a wider field of view on your video without using the ultra wide lens. Now, 
The reason you might not want to use the ultra wide lens is because it is not as good of a lens as the main camera because it doesn't let in as much light and it just doesn't have as much megapixels. So the quality that you're going to get on this, especially in lower light scenarios, is never going to be as good as the main lens. But if you want a wider field of view just to be able to fit more into your shot, what you can do instead is go to these three dots here, tap on settings, and right there you'll see video stabilization is enabled. And the way video stabilization works is that it needs to crop into the lens to be able to stabilize the footage. But if you're maybe standing still and you're not moving around or running, you probably don't need that extra stabilization. And there's already built in stabilization into the lenses that will give you smoother footage as it is. So what you can do is go back into those settings and then just remove video stabilization. And now you're going to find that you're going to have a wider field of view on that main 1x lens. All right, now this next Samsung tip is going to help you take cleaner looking screenshots. So if you take screenshots a lot and you like to share them with family members or friends, what you might be doing is just taking a screenshot of your screen, but you're going to see that in your screenshot, you have your status bar up here that shows your battery, you know, your network connections, any notifications and the time up here but you can ignore those in your screenshots just to take cleaner looking screenshots. So to do this, we're gonna go into our settings, swipe down to advanced features, go to screenshots and screen recording, and right there, enable this feature that says hide status and navigation bars. And what you're gonna see now is when I take a screenshot and I go to it, this navigation bar and everything up here is no longer going to show up. So the screenshots are just going to look much cleaner and there's not gonna be any of that extra junk that nobody cares about. Now here are two really cool quick setting features that you might not know, but if you turn on your flashlight and then long press on it, you can actually change the intensity of that flashlight. So if it's really late at night and you don't want to be too bright, you can dim it down. But if you want as much brightness as possible, you can just slide that slider up to get the maximum brightness. Also, if you go back into here, there is an option here for rotate your uh, home screen. And what you're going to see now is we can put our phone into landscape and it's going to rotate it. And now we can use our phone kind of like in this landscape mode. But what you might not know is that if we go back into here, you can also long press on this and then apply the same setting to your lock screen. And when you do that and then you go to your lock screen, you can also rotate your lock screen. And then if you just let it time out and dim and for your always on display to turn on, you're going to see that it's going to turn on into this standby mode, kind of like you have on the iPhone. And now when you go to sleep at night, you can put your phone into this horizontal mode to get a bigger always on display clock. So if you wake up at night, you can quickly check what time it is and go back to sleep. All right, guys, now this last hidden setting that everybody needs to know about is if you ever need to take your phone in to repair and you have to take it to one of those kiosks or, you know, shops at the mall where they repair phones, but you don't trust the person there not to go snooping through your data, which I 100% wouldn't fault you to. You should absolutely not trust those people. There have been studies done that show that these people do go snooping through your personal data. But if you want to protect yourself and all of your personal data when you give your phone in to these people to repair it, there's an absolutely amazing Samsung setting that you need to know about called maintenance mode. And to find it, you want to go into your phone settings, go to device care, and down at the bottom, you'll see it right there. And you can see what it says there is when you turn on maintenance mode, only pre-installed apps are available. Personal data, including pictures, messages, and accounts can't be accessed and downloaded apps are hidden. So when you turn on maintenance mode, it's going to restart your phone and put it into maintenance mode. So let's go ahead and restart. And I'm going to show you exactly what this looks like. All right, so here we go. Our phone has now restarted and you can see if I swipe up, there is no password. It just unlocks and down here it says maintenance mode. And if I go into my messaging app, there's no messages. If I go to my browser, there is no browse history. It's not even unlocked. And if I go and find my gallery, where's the gallery right there? You can see that there is no pictures and none of your personal data. Nothing is available for the person to look at when they're repairing your phone. But functionally, your phone is going to work and anything that they need to repair, they will be able to diagnose in this maintenance mode and go ahead and fix it without being able to spy on any of your personal data. And if they ever want to exit maintenance mode or maybe they finished repairing your phone and they give it back to you, all you need to do is swipe down, tap over here and exit maintenance mode. And when you hit restart, you can see it's going to ask for your PIN or pattern or password and obviously only you have this information so they will not be able to exit maintenance mode to go into your actual phone so definitely a must know feature if you're going to send your phone in for repairs but there you go guys that's gonna do it for this video hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something if you did be sure to leave a like subscribe for future videos to come and i'll see you in the next one peace